Welcome back to the channel, KMR, hanging out with Mazda Tricks. We are going to talk some BRAP. I've got three rotor housings lined up. We're going to talk about why a new rotor housing is almost always the best choice when you're rebuilding the motor. Uh, but we're also going to look at some used ones and talk a little bit about what I look for if I'm inspecting a used rotor housing um, and what kind of deems them usable or not usable, depending on what kind of tools you have and what kind of inspection you're doing. So we're going to jump right into it. Um, obviously, again, if you're looking for new parts, uh, you can hit me up, KMR or Mazda Tricks. A lot of new parts on the shelf. And uh, we got a lot of cool stuff in the KMR eBay store and online store. So thank you, everybody, who's been checking that out. And also thank you, everybody, who's been asking questions because we got some great upcoming videos. So when I'm looking at rotor housings, again, with understanding that a new rotor housing is basically um, your best choice if you're looking for reliability, if you're trying to build what would be considered a new motor, if it's an OEM car going through a traditional rebuild, you really can't beat new. Although there are some resurfacing uh, services available and there are some companies that offer, uh, I believe it's Cermit or ceramic metallic coatings, uh, a lot of that, a lot of the times, uh, the coatings either get more expensive than just buying a new housing, um, and obviously grinding or surfacing them is removing material, so you're not going to get the longest lifespan. So, if you're trying to get fifty, a hundred thousand miles plus. Um, generally starting off with new is going to be almost your only option. If it's more of a race motor, experimental motor, um, something you're just trying to get back up and going, a hot rod, then reusing a housing can uh, really be a benefit. They're very expensive components. So at that point, sending them out for surface grinding, um, which can remove some of the wear pattern and give the apex seal, if you're running new seals, gives the apex seal a new opportunity to wear into its own pattern uh, versus trying or being forced to bed into an existing wear pattern. Uh, and, and just basically, just like a piston motor, honing the walls, resurfacing, gives all of your new seals um, a better opportunity to break in and bed in for a long lifetime of running. So again, getting into the idea of trying to build a motor uh, that's going to last long, be reliable. Um, if you're starting off new, you can expect the most mileage as long as nothing goes terribly wrong. And in a second option, if you reuse something that's got a decent chrome surface and does not have an exceptionally large amount of uh, variated wear pattern from the apex seals uh, running across the surface, and you can see in the color uh, discoloration, uh, that you've got some shiny and you've got some of the original uh, surface here left is as you wear um, the color will change and you'll actually wear through that chrome so the chrome surface is a wearable and you're wearing it off with the apex seal so if your motor or rotor housing has 20 or 40 thousand miles on it and a rotor housing very rarely goes past a hundred thousand miles um, you can kind of do the math on how much chrome surface you might have left and how long that rotor housing might last. Now, there's other things to be concerned about. If the motor's ever been overheated, if it's ever uh, been under extreme use, racing use, then there could be shrinkage to be concerned about. And your general areas of concern are where the heat concentrates. So heat concentration around your exhaust or around your spark plugs if you're seeing discoloration, uh, carbon buildup in those areas, that could all be signs of extreme heat. And at that point, you're definitely going to be wanting to spec the housing out. And per the factory manuals, per factory specs, any shrinkage or variation in the rotor housing in total that's over 3 thousandths of an inch, meaning if you've got variations bigger than 1.5 on each side in the same area, um, or 0.0015, one one thousandth of an inch, one and a half thousandths of an inch per side, um, then that could lead to water seal failure because the rotor housing is creating a metal to metal seal against the cast iron plate. Um, and a lot of the times those cast iron plates are not perfectly flat, not completely 
uh, void of imperfection. So when using used rotor housings and putting them against a used side plate, you're opening up the opportunity for a greater chance of water seal failure. So when it came to KMR and Mazda tricks, a lot of the times for reliability or OEM builds, new rotor housings and lapped sides were the way we went to ensure the longest potential uh, runtime and best reliability without going to all new parts. Um, but if you don't have those types of options, then using new is an option provided you don't have any shrinkage beyond three thousandths of an inch in total um, in any given area. Um, and provided you don't have any water corrosion that's started to damage any of your water seal area. So you got to make sure that this water gallery hasn't started to move its way towards the water seals. Anywhere that the water seal gallery might rupture to water seal could be a fail point or would be a fail point and would... Uh, then the housing would be useless. And then we've got one that's a little more used over here. And you can see that as extreme temperatures, extreme use, uh, extreme conditions happen in rotor housings, you can even see cracking here in the chrome surface. Um, and even though this particular housing has a decent chrome surface left, um, that type of cracking right there would deem this housing non-usable. So looking for ruptured water jacket areas, extreme corrosion, cracking in the spark plug area, any type of wear around the chrome, chipping of the chrome, um, and general wear can all lead to shortened lifespan of your rotary engine. So take that all into consideration. I know everybody's on a budget. We all have to work within our means, but there's no reason to use rotor housings that are beyond their lifespan, corrosion-wise, shrunk wise or cracks or chips. There's a lot of good opportunities out there to find some good housing housings and I hope everybody keeps on brapping because that's a brap.